In this lesson, I want to show you guys how I create post-production volume. Um, before I go into Unreal, I just want to show you guys how to create a loot map. And basically, I'm in Photoshop right now and I took a screenshot of my scene. And as you can see, there's this little uh, loot layer over here. And that's basically just a way for Unreal to uh, copy the Photoshop uh, modifications back into Unreal. So. I can go ahead and in in Photoshop and start just editing my colors and uh, setting some post-production volume. So um, I'm just gonna play around with levels a little bit and uh, see what suits it more, and maybe a bit of uh, hue and saturation. It basically to whatever your liking is. I'm just gonna add maybe curves as well. It's maybe a bit more red. Bit less green, something like that, and yeah, I guess that's pretty good to me. Um, so what I want to do now is basically I want to select that loot map here and just save it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select it, and uh, I'm just gonna make sure that I crop right to it, and I'm just gonna go ahead and save it. So here I already have example here. I'm just gonna write over that. Make sure you're in PNG. And I don't want any compression. Click OK. And let's go ahead into Unreal. So now we're in Unreal. And I'm just gonna go into my content browser here. And as you can see in lesson 15, I already got the loot map. So I'm just gonna re-import that to make sure I got the latest version. Save it. And what I want to do now is I want to create a post-production volume. So I'm going to just hide the content browser for just a second. I'm going to go into my models here. I'm just going to type in post-production. Here we go. And uh, as you can see, it has it, it's in the shape of a box. And what we want to make sure that our entire scene is covered in the box because the uh, post-process volume only will be... Uh, working within the boundaries of the box. So I'm just gonna increase the size. You can make it as big as you want really. Um, it's pretty good to me. And so on my uh, details here I got all of the uh, all of these settings for the post process volume. So I can go into the post process here and before I go anywhere I want to start by using our uh, loot map and see what that uh, gives us. I'm just gonna go into uh, uh, scene color here and I'm gonna tick the loot here. I'm just gonna drag it right here. So as you can see, it kind of went a little too much. So uh, if you select the um, uh, color grading intensity here, you can just crank it down a little bit. Try to match it whatever you had in Photoshop. It's pretty good to me. Um, also, you can play around with fringing and uh, things like that, but I'm trying to basically stay away from any uh, too many effects on the scene. I want to keep it as clean as possible. So I don't want any bloom at this point because there's no uh, light sources or anything like that. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead down here. Just going to go through the settings. I don't want any light cube map. I do want to con uh, control exposure. Now, if you remember before when we were lighting, I was sort of pointing, uh, aiming at about plus two exposure, but if you put uh, the automatic one, and that's the one that you will have in game, it will go a bit too bright for my taste. So I'm just gonna go ahead here into auto exposure and just gonna uh, set it up for us. So I'm gonna take minimum brightness, maximum brightness, and also I'm gonna switch to speed up and spe uh, speed down. I'm gonna put these on maximum. Uh, settings. Now I want to put these on maximum so that whenever I do changes to my exposure, it changes straight away and I don't have to uh, wait for it to change. So now I can go ahead and start playing around with the uh, minimum exposure here. And a minimum exposure is basically what you really want to work with. So let's try 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is a bit too much. 0.2 seems just right where we need it to be. And if you can see, maximum exposure doesn't really uh, change much in, in our scenario here. So I'm just going to tick off the speed up and speed down now because I want them to go back to the original settings. And that's almost it, really. Um, 
for this scene you could also add a depth of field but I prefer to use depth of field uh, only on some macro scenes or any some stuff like that in this case it's not really uh, useful um, last thing I want to do is just gonna go into my uh, ambient occlusion here and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that my ambient occlusion is set correctly so if you go to the edges here you can see a little bit of ambient occlusion on the edge here and you can change the uh, radius and the strength you don't really want to play with any other settings but strength and radius are the most important ones so I'm just gonna make sure it looks okay and it looks pretty good to me so this is it for this lesson in the next lesson I want to go ahead and scatter some rocks and debris around the scene